In today's video, we'll be discussing several old Hollywood actresses who managed to make it past the big 100. You'll probably be surprised to learn a few of the female stars who made it to this big milestone. So join us as Facts First presents old Hollywood actresses who lived to be 100 years old. Connie Sawyer Connie Sawyer, born Rosie Cohen on November 27, 1912, was an American film, television, and stage actress who earned herself the nickname the Clown Princess of Comedy. Throughout her lengthy Hollywood career, which spanned 86 years, she appeared in more than 140 films and TV shows, including When Harry Met Sally, Dumb and Dumber, and Pineapple Express. After winning a radio contest shortly after graduating high school, Sawyer got the chance to perform on a radio variety program in San Francisco called Al Pierce and His Gang. It gave her the opportunity to develop her comedy routine. At 19, Sawyer moved to New York, where she began performing in nightclubs and vaudeville theaters. It didn't take long for her to transition to appearing on television. A couple of her early TV credits were for shows like The Jackie Gleason Show and The Milton Berle Show. In the 1950s, she appeared in both the Broadway and Hollywood film productions of A Hole in the Head, which saw her perform alongside Frank Sinatra. She went on to appear regularly in TV shows like The Rockford Files, Hawaii Five-0, Boy Meets World, Ray Donovan, and Seinfeld, just to name a few. She continued to act past the age of 100. In 2013, she appeared in NCIS Los Angeles. The following year, she made another appearance on the sitcom New Girl. For the final 12 years of her life, she lived at the Motion Picture and Television Fund's residential complex for entertainment industry retirees in L.A. At 105, Sawyer passed away after suffering a heart attack January 21, 2018. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Ethel Owen Ethel Owen was born Ethel Marguerite Waite on March 30, 1893. Best known for her recurring role on The Honeymooners as Mrs. Gibson, Ralph Cramden's quick-witted and pesky mother-in-law, Owen's career really got rolling after appearing as a series regular on the popular 1930s radio serial Gangbusters. Some of her later credits included turns on Robert Montgomery Presents, Craft Theater, and the horror and mystery anthology series Inner Sanctum. Ethel retired from acting in the mid-1960s when she was in her early 70s. She died just weeks shy of her 104th birthday, February 16, 1997, in Savannah, Georgia. Amazingly, she outlived her first husband, Raymond Owens, by nearly 71 years. Patricia Morrison Born March 19, 1915, Patricia Morrison was a TV, film, and stage actress from Hollywood's Golden Age who made her film debut in 1939. Some of her biggest known films include Fallen Sparrow, The Song of Bernadette, and Dressed to Kill. In addition to her good looks, acting chops, and frequent casting as a femme fatale, Patricia was also a gifted mezzo-soprano singer. After returning to Broadway later on in her acting career, she achieved her greatest success as the lead in a production of Cole Porter's Kiss Me Kate. She followed that up with an equally notable performance in the Rodgers and Hammerstein musical The King and I. In the 1950s and into the 1960s, she made several appearances in TV shows like Robert Montgomery Presents, The Toast of the Town with Ed Sullivan, and The General Foods 25th Anniversary Show, A Salute to Rodgers and Hammerstein. In her later years, Morrison devoted herself to painting. She also made several appearances on stage at various Broadway benefit events. At age 103, Patricia Morrison died at her home in L.A. on May 20, 2018. Marsha Hunt With a career spanning almost 80 years, Marsha Hunt appeared in almost too many films to count. A few of these include Born in the West, Kid Glove Killer, The Human Comedy, and Johnny Got His Gun. Hunt was born October 17, 1917, in Chicago, Illinois. After her family moved to New York when she was a child, she began performing in school plays and church productions. After graduating high school at age 16, Hunt found work modeling for the John Powers Agency and started taking acting classes at the Theodora Irvine Studio. She landed a seven-year contract with Paramount Pictures at age 17. With Paramount, Hunt made 12 pictures, including Easy to Take, Gentle Julia, and Murder Goes to College. After her contract was terminated in 1938, she spent several years doing B-films with the Poverty Row Studios, Monogram Pictures, and Republic Pictures. 
During the infamous McCarthyism era of the 1950s, she was blacklisted by Hollywood film execs. During this time, she became active in the humanitarian cause of world hunger. In her later years, she provided aid to homeless shelters, signaled her support for same-sex marriage, helped raise awareness for climate change, and promoted peace in developing nations. At 104, Hunt died from natural causes at her home in Sherman Oaks, Los Angeles, on September 7, 2022. Olivia de Havilland this British-American actress appeared in 49 feature films between 1935 and 1988. She's generally considered to be one of the leading actresses of her time. De Havilland was born July 1, 1916. She rose to prominence after appearing alongside Errol Flynn in adventure films like Captain Blood and The Adventures of Robin Hood. One of the biggest roles of her career was that of Melanie Hamilton in Gone with the Wind. For that role, she was nominated for her first of five Oscar nominations and her only one for Best Supporting Actress. In the 1940s, she stepped away from ingenue roles and distinguished herself in films such as Hold Back the Dawn, To Each His Own, and The Heiress. For the latter two, she was honored with Oscar wins for Best Actress. In addition to her prolific film career, de Havilland also had an active and wildly productive stage career, appearing on Broadway three times. Her first was for Romeo and Juliet. She followed that up with Candida and A Gift of Time. On TV, she appeared in offerings like the miniseries Roots, The Next Generations, and Anastasia, The Mystery of Anna. De Havilland passed away in her sleep of natural causes at her home in Paris on July 26, 2020, at age 104. Gloria Stewart Born July 4, 1910, Gloria Stewart was best known for her roles in pre-code era Hollywood films. She also played the elderly version of Rose in James Cameron's 1997 epic Titanic. Stewart grew up in Santa Monica, California and started acting in high school. After graduating, she attended UC Berkeley, where she launched a theatrical career performing in local productions and doing summer stock theater in LA and New York. She signed to Universal Pictures in 1932 and went on to appear in films such as Old Dark House and The Invisible Man. In 1936, she shared the screen with Shirley Temple in the musical Poor Little Richard. She followed that up with appearances in Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm and The Three Musketeers. In the 1940s, her film career began to slow down. She took this opportunity to instead appear in regional theatrical productions in New England. Not long after that, she abandoned her acting career and shifted her focus to art. In the late 70s and 80s, Stewart returned to acting, making appearances in films like My Favorite Year and Wildcats. While her 1997 Titanic performance is definitely her most notable later role, her final acting credit was for her role in the 2004 film Land of Plenty. At age 100, Stewart died of respiratory failure September 26, 2010. Now it's time to hear from you. What do you think the secret to the longevity of these actresses was? Were you a fan of any of them? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.